What's going on, folks? Back again for another one. So today we'll be talking a little bit about Dario Argento's Superior, a 1977 Italian horror film. And so the story's about a young lady, Susie Bannon from New York, travels to Germany to attend a world-renowned dance school called the TAM Academy. Movie starts off, Susie arrives at the airport, um, 10.40 p.m., Soon as she walks outside, boom, it seems to be a fierce rain, thunder, lightning storm, gets in a cab, cab drives from the airport to the academy, along the way, uh, driving through a forest, as the lightning strikes, we see a uh, Shapes that can be, you know, maybe strange beings, monsters, or whatever. Really don't know, really don't come back to it. Gets to the academy, approaches the door. As soon as she gets to the door, boom, another young lady rushes out and to, you know, past her into the uh, thunder, lightning, and rainstorm. Susie attempts to get in. By um, calling through the intercom, voice on the other side of the intercom, basically told her, tells her to leave, go away. Tries to explain, hey, I'm a student checking in, leave, go away. She gets back into the car, and as the cab is driving through the forest, she actually sees the uh, young lady who just ran past her. Running through the forest. And so that young lady. She runs to an apartment building. Um, she decides to stay. At a you know, friend's house. Sister's house. Cousin. Never explain really who it is. Yeah, um, her friend. Let's call her a friend. Asked the young lady. Whose name is Pat. What's the matter? Because she seemed to be uh, upset, acting strange. Pat doesn't tell her, but just said that, hey, if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. She goes off into the bedroom, locks the door, gets fascinated with something in the window. She thinks she sees something in the window. She looks in the window. It's too dark for her to see out. And then she grabs a lamp. Yeah, she grabs a lamp. You know, two eyes appear. Somebody jumps through the window. Begins to stab her. She's screaming. Her friend hears that. Tried to get in. Doors locked. So she runs out. The apartment started knocking on other apartment doors trying to get help. Somehow the, the, uh, the attacker and Pat, they get out of the room, get out of the apartment, and they make their way to the roof. And on the roof, there's this um, colorful glass sky roof or skylight that's on the roof. He stabs her a few times, more times. He probably stabbed her about a hundred times by now or something like to that matter. Grabs the, grab the cord, ties it around her neck and throws her down through the skylight, hanging her. And for some reason at that moment, her friend is standing like right underneath the skylight in the lobby of the apartment. And she gets killed by the glass. We get like a two for one deal. So in the morning, Susie, she returns to the school. Uh, she meets um, uh, Miss Tanner, um, who's the head dance instructor, Mrs. Blank, who's the um, associate director. 
They asked her, well, we were expecting you last night. Why didn't you come? She was like, I got here at 10 p.m., but I couldn't get in. And so for some reason, Mrs. Blank uh, tells us that one of the students got murdered off campus last night. Don't know why she would tell somebody who this the first day um, coming to attend <laughs> that because why wouldn't Susie at that point say, "Hey, I made a mistake. Let me go back to New York." But she she doesn't. Miss Blank also explains that uh, her dorm room isn't ready, so she has to stay off campus with another student named Olga, and she would have to give Olga fifty dollars a week. Um. So anyway, this happened to there happens to be some police there investigating the murder of Pat. So as Susie is walking away, I think she's going to the locker room or whatever. Uh, she hears them asking, "Well, what time did the young lady did Pat leave?" And she said, "Oh, she left at uh, 11 p.m. when I got here." When she clearly said. That she she just told him that she got there at 10, which she probably did get there to 11, but I guess that might have been a mistake of the film, uh, for that matter. Uh, so she did, she, she, uh, was supporting in the next part, she meets this, uh, young lady named Sarah, who would be the one to, uh, give her information about what's going on, the ins and outs of what's going on at the academy and things like that. So, um, she actually, um, she goes off campus with her uh, off campus roommate. Roommate explains that um, Pat was sort of like a, a busybody, as she called her, and explains that, oh, she's always getting in trouble and doing something. And Susie explains, and this is where you, in, in a part of the movie, would have, it, it does this three times. And, um, uh, I really didn't like it because they actually didn't show that from the scene. So apparently they do a flashback to what, what happened. And, and uh, even though she she crossed paths with Pat for a brief second during a rain and thunder and lightning storm, she somehow heard Pat say secret flowers or whatever. So anyway, she goes back to the dorm. Missy Blank explains to her that the room, her room is ready. She don't have to stay with Olga anymore. Uh, Susie prefers to stay with Olga off campus. Miss Blank seems to pretend that she doesn't care. Because she's like, oh, well, you, you actually, when you registered, you said you were going to stay on campus. But it really don't matter to me. You can, you can stay off campus if you want. So Susie gets ready for a dance class. She's walking through this hallway. In the hallway, you see a, a maid. The maid is rubbing something with a with a rag. It seems to be some kind of type of a little pyramid. They really don't show really what it is, but but they try to insinuate that when it flashes, it has some kind of effect on Susie. Susie gets to the dance class now, uh, feeling sick, feeling a little, little bit ill and dizzy. She explains to Miss Tanner, hey, i not really feeling up to this. Miss Tanner said, hey, dance anyway. I need to see what you can do. So she dances a little bit and collapses. She wakes up in a room with all her, all her things in this room. And she said, where am I? Oh, we had to, we moved you in campus onto the room. Olga gave back the money and blah, blah, blah. So they decided to put her on this special diet with, uh, they call it bland food, food with no seasoning and wine. So that, so they, 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 they that's, that's the remedy for uh, Susie. So Susie, be, you know, begins to talk a lot more with uh, Sarah. Sarah ha happens to be, I guess, her 
um, door maid who, I guess, who lives in the academy somewhere close to her. And by the way, this building is super, super gigantic building. Super gigantic building. Dorm rooms are unusually big for dorm rooms. Uh, so anyway, she begins talking to um, Sarah about a lot of things. Sarah just sort of like insinuates without really telling her that there's a lot of strange things that's going on or whatever or whatnot. So on that particular night, um, they show, you know, several of the young ladies in the dorm uh, seem, seemingly brushing something off their, their hair and it turns to find out there's a bunch of maggots falling from the ceiling. <laughs> so the, the administrators claimed it was it was from uh, some spoiled food or something like that. So uh, that night they have all of them. Uh, uh, they make a, a makeshift dormitory out of out of one of the uh, dance studios, and they put up they put up a lot of sheets and a lot of little beds. Uh, they turn off the lights, but of course the lights don't go go all the way off. It seem to turn off the lights, and it's this this weird red glow around every single thing. And Susie and not, yeah, Susie and Sarah sleeping nearby. Susie, you know, goes to sleep. Sarah wakes her up because she hears some weird snoring, and she tells a story about uh, one day in her room at night. There was a bunch of weird snoring. And she woke up in the morning and she asked who was that in the other room and they told her it was the actual director. And so she seemed to think for some reason, I don't really know why this is important, that it's direct, the director right behind them sleeping, snoring. Again, I again, ain't, don't really know why it's important. So anyway, uh, uh, next day come... Um, there's an incident that happens with the, uh, there's a blind piano player they have for all their sessions who provides the music when they're dancing. His, his, his service dog, <laughs> uh, bites the, the associate director's nephew. And we have, uh, Miss, Miss Tanner storming in, cussing the man out. Then they get into a fuss. He calls it a B word and and, and leaves. <laughs> he just storms off, you know. And so 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 later that night with him, later that night, they show him going to to a bar. Leaves the bar. He's walking along with his CNI dog. Uh, he seems to think somebody's following him. All of a sudden, his CNI dog turns around, attacks him. Tear the throat out. Kind of vicious scene. Nice scene though. Vicious, but kind of nice. So the next day, Susie talks to Miss Miss Blank and said there's a lot of strange things going on and and this and the other thing. She said, Oh yeah, what happened to Daniel? The piano was strained, was unfortunate. Well, and Susie, was, well, Susie is not just that, but she was like, I forgot to tell you. And it's the second time they do this. Remember I told you the, the first time they did it while she was uh, staying with the with the other student off campus. So they expound, expounds upon this thing. So apparently, even though she bumped into Pat for a second, now, if, now she can remember Pat saying more. Secret flowers, secret linners. When she did not have time enough, the way they show that she did not have time enough. So anyway, Mrs. Blake said, oh, oh, okay, I have no idea what that, that is. I'll make a note and call the police. So later on, she's talking to Sarah. And Sarah was saying, well, hey, you shouldn't have, shouldn't have said that because... I happen to be the, the person who was on the intercom. So now they might come after me. Then she explained that, hey, I have notes. Some notes that Pat took where she documented a lot of strange stuff was happening. And again, she could just tell Susie 
this stuff now. She's like, oh, I'll bring it to your room later. So later that night, she, she's in Susie's room in a panic. Susie, 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 Susie. For, for, you know, for some reason, since she's been on, Susie's been on this special diet. After she consumed the wine and eat the food, she can't stay awake. Somebody's been getting drugged, obviously. So anyway, she tried to tell her about the notes. The notes are gone. The notes are gone. I can't find the notes. And and uh, uh, then she she's harping about this thing about uh about whether they need leave or not. They leave at a certain time. Susie, even though in her, her drug state, induces that, hey, if they were going left, they'd be leaving, but they're going right, so that means they're not leaving. But again, this place has got gigantic. It has to have more than one place to leave uh, another exit. Not going to just have one exit. A building that size wouldn't make any sense, but I guess in this movie, it, it don't matter. Then what do it matter where they go? At the, who, who cares? Why is that important? So anyway, um, you know, Sarah's upset. She can't really wake up Susie. Excuse, yeah, Susie. Um, she, 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 she appears to see somebody because, because in the, in, in Susie or in every room, there's more than one way to enter and exit. So in the, so from the other side, she appeared to hear somebody trying to uh, come into the door. So she, in a panic, she runs out of Susie's dorm room. Um, she don't go to her, her do dorm room. I guess she 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 attempts to find, you know, where they actually go, or something. That, you know, just kind of silly. So someone does come in Susie's room, sees Susie sleep. Uh, goes out. Um, Sarah finds a room to hide. At this point, it's too late. Somebody is on to her. So even though she locks the door, the individual tries to uh, unhook the lock, lock hatch with a knife. Uh, Susie don't do anything to stop him. Instead, she notices that there's another window that leads maybe to another room. So she climbs through that window, and when they flash inside the room, we can clearly see that it's a room filled with with uh, razor wire, barbed wire, and all kind of stuff. So we thinking, well, okay, well, if we can see this, Sarah must obviously obviously can see this, but she jumps into the room and get tangles up into the into the razor wire, screaming, ah. ah, ah. Uh, and try to crawl to the to the other side of the of the room. There's a door. I guess she thinks she can. Uh, if she get to that door, she can leave. But instead, uh, somebody with a cloak and gloves slits her throat, and that's the end of her. So of course, Susie wakes up looking for Sarah, uh, Miss Tanner, and one of the other students. Confirms that uh, that hey Sarah left in the middle of the night. So one of, in one of uh, Sarah's last last conversation with Susie, she 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 mentioned a doctor friend that she has that could possibly help them. Susie contacts him. She meets with him. He talks to her and he t starts telling. Susie, a whole bunch of stuff about the, the the history of the building that it was it was um, first started as not only a dance school but a a school of the occult and a dance school and the founder may have been practicing witchcraft but uh it burnt down they re rebuilt it one of her favorite students took over. And he, he he introduced her to another one of his colleagues, and he talks to her a, a, a whole bunch about witchcraft. And mind and, and mind you, they haven't really showed us truly anything that can be attributed a hundred percent to witchcraft 
in this movie, it just seemed like, okay, we're just going to throw in witchcraft. And they just threw in this witchcraft stuff. So she, she goes back to the school. Um, takes a nap. When she wakes up, she notices that everybody at the school is gone. And um, maid informs her that, hey, uh, Miss Tanner decided to take everybody out to see opera or whatever. So she by herself. Uh, so she decides to like uh, do an investigation because she, she, she finds a piece of paper that, that um, Sarah left, left her about the, the, the steps that the uh, administrators take when they're going wherever else into the building. So she, she follows that. And uh, she she gets to this other part of the uh, dorm, actually, where she sees uh, Miss Tanner, Miss Tanner, Miss Blank, uh, some of the other people, I guess their henchmen or whatever, upset, like, the American girl. I wish she would just die. I wish she would die. She would die. She needs to die. <laughs> Susie sings that and she she backs up and she sort of like backs up and she backs up to an area where she she unfortunately sees her friend's uh Sarah's body. They don't even do a good job of hide, hiding the bodies. They leave them where you can easily find them. What what kind of movie is this? But anyway, she finds another room. Um then she she looks on the wall and she see these flowers. And again, for the last time, last and third, third time, it goes back to the thing where they add more things that supposedly she heard Pat say when she she bumped into her for a second during a rain, the serious rain, lightning, and thunderstorm. And this time it's like secret Leonard's the center blue. Turn it to the left. <laughs> and it, again, there's no way she could have heard her say any of that stuff in that storm. So anyway, she does, and she comes into another room. And uh, she she hears somebody. She hears that strange snoring that uh, Sarah talks about when it was like uh, sleeping in the dorm room after the maggot incident. And uh, something startles her, and she she knocks over this this uh, uh, peacock artwork, and it breaks, and it wakes up. We assume in the director in the bed, and the director says, "Ah, you you're coming to kill me. I've been expecting you. I've been expecting you. Oh, well, how you been expecting you? She never knew you existed. How would you expect that?" But anyway, she goes into this rant. Um, Susie picks up picks up a, a piece that, that looks like a, a has a sharp end to it from the uh, artwork that she broke. She goes over. She 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 rips open the curtain. The uh, director seems to make herself invisible, and she calls into a, she calls into the room a zombified version of uh, uh, Sarah holding a butcher knife to kill Susie. And it's, again, it's thundering and lightning at this point. But every time the thunder strikes, she sees the silhouette of the director. She stabs her in the neck, and that caused everything in the room to start going haywire. Stuff started blowing up. The zombified version of Sarah collapses. Stuff started f falling down. She runs out, and she she notices that after she stabbed the uh, director, that Mrs. Mrs. Tanner, Miss Blank, and all the other henchmen, for some reason, it affects them, and they start to die. She runs out. Everything falling down, stuff still blowing up. Then she gets out. And as she's getting out into the storm, walking out, scream, uh, the building blows up in flames. 
And that's like the end. So now the best part of this movie is the look of the movie. You know, they do a good job with the with the colors. Uh, interesting shots, like when somebody stabs somebody, you sort of like get a really good picture of the weapon. So this this movie would be really good seeing it on a big big screen due to the, the colors, some of the camera angles that they do. Is it scary? As some people call it a horror classic. I wouldn't really say that it's really scary. They try to make it, it gory. Uh, then the other thing with this, you have this whole witchcraft thing. Like I say, you never see any of the so-called witches really do anything. It seems to be the people who commit the murder is some kind of henchmen. And they don't do it in a magi magical way. They typically stab people. I guess the only thing that could be attributed to witchcraft is when the uh, time Susie was like walking through the hallway and she got suddenly got sick. But they really don't really push the issue and really make that connection. And then when the when the uh, blind man got attacked by a CNI dog again, they really don't push the connection with that to make it seem like it's is is witchcraft. You know, so. So they have that there and they, and it seemed like, okay, well, if you're this world famous school and you got all these, these, uh, students from these prominent families, like, uh, Sarah's father was some type of ambassador. So you, so his daughter comes missing, he's not, he's, you're not gonna come to that school or send people to the school. So, you, you know, it, it really don't make any sense if you're going to say, hey, we this world famous academy. One, so, so you are already in public eye because you're you world famous, world renowned, and got prestige. Your students are rich, come from families of influence and you just kill them off. That that part really didn't make any sense. Didn't really make any sense. It seemed like if you had this secret. You would do a better job of keeping it a secret, but from, on the other hand, it's like the individuals who who were investigating this. What was their motivation? Because other than other than them being, because usually when somebody get get killed, so we can assume the blind guy got killed because he he allowed his, his dog bit the assistant director's arm. Pat and Sarah got killed because they were snooping around it's like okay if you're not snooping around they're not gonna do anything to you so yeah i would have liked to see them mix in the witchcraft stuff more then it would sort of like make sense of the individual's motivation for what they were doing but other than that Interesting movie. Movie looked good as far as that go. If you watch it, don't expect it to make sense. Don't expect some of the things the characters do to make sense. But you want to watch it and see something like maybe highly artistic. This is an interesting movie to watch. Other than that, next time, peace.